One sunny afternoon, a young mathematician named Alice stumbled upon the hotel. Having heard the intriguing tales of its infinite rooms, she decided to investigate the paradox that lay within its walls. Upon entering the grand lobby, she was greeted by the concierge, a dapper man named Hilbert, who claimed to have never denied a single rumor about the hotel's opening. Welcome to Hilbert's hotel, he said with a knowing smile. But the wall so kidding Eager to test the limits of the hotel's infinite capacity I'd like a room for you She began, trying to sound nonchalant Hilbert's smile grew wide Of course, madam, we have just the room for you But may I ask, do you have any particular preferences? A view of the hills, perhaps? Or a room closer to the sea? I was blinking surprised I didn't realize I had a choice I thought all the rooms were the same, given the infinite nature of your hotel. Hilbert chuckled. But that's the beauty of infinity, my dear. While each room may be the same size, their locations are as unique as the numbers themselves. Now, if you don't mind, could you please follow me? He led Alice down a seemingly endless corridor, the walls adorned with intricate tapestries depicting scenes from various mathematical fields. They passed room after room. Each numbered with a prime number. Alice's mind raced with questions, but she remained silent, not wanting to interrupt the enigmatic concierge. As they continued their journey, Hilbert pointed out various landmarks from the hotel. On the left, we have our infinity pool, where the water neither rises nor falls, no matter how many guests decide to take a dip. And on the right, the fractal garden, where every plant is a miniature replica of itself. Stretching out to the horizon in an infinite path, Alice nodded, her eyes wide with light. She eventually arrived at a doorway in the room too. Hilbert opened it to reveal a crazy, well-appointed space. Your room, madam, he said with a flourish. Alice stepped inside and looked around. Her room was indeed identical to the one she had seen in the corridor. Yet she couldn't shake the feeling that it was somehow different. But what about all the other guests? How do they fit in if you keep moving them to make room for new arrivals? Ah, the paradox. Hilbert said, leaning against the door frame. You see, when we have an infinite number of guests, we simply ask the ones in the odd numbered rooms to move to the next even room. That way, all the odds become even, and voila, we have an infinite number of rooms available. Alice furrowed her brow. Trying to grasp the concept. But wouldn't that mean everyone's room number changes? Indeed, it does. Hilbert responded. His eyes twinkling with amusement. But fear not. Our guests are quite accustomed to the shifting nature of their accommodations. After all, the only constant here is the infinite number of spaces we have to offer. Alice pondered this for a moment before another question popped into her head. And what happens if a new guest arrives when all the rooms are filled with an infinite number of people? Hilbert's smile remained unwavering. Ah, an excellent inquiry. In such a scenario, we would simply ask every guest to move to the room numbered twice their current room. This would shift all the guests into the even-numbered rooms, leaving all the odd-numbered rooms vacant for the new arrivals. Alice nodded slowly, her head spinning with the implications of such a system. But what if an infinite number of guests Check arrive at the same case, time? Ah, the grand we'll finale of our hotel's on infinite day, Hilbert said with a chuckle. In that train, case, we would simply ask all the guests to move to the room numbered with the square of their the current room. Those in rooms 1, in 2, and 3 would move to 1, 4, and 9, and so on. Heavy this would create an infinite number of empty rooms in a pattern of 1, and 3, 5, 7, and so forth for our new guests to occupy. It's all quite elementary, really, once you embrace the paradox. Alice's mind was racing as she tried to visualize the complex shuffling of guests that would occur with each new arrival. The very thought of such an operation seemed to bend the rules of reality itself. But how do you manage to keep track of everyone? She asked, her curiosity. Ah, that is the secret of Hilbert's Hotel, the concierge replied, tapping his finger against his temple. We have a special system in place. A sort of infinite abacus, if you will. Each room is connected to a bead that moves in response to the guest's movement. It's quite ingenious, really. The hotel's design is not just for show, 
It's a living, breathing embodiment of mathematical principles. Alice looked around the room, her mind swimming with the paradoxical nature of her new home. And what about the hotel staff? She asked. Surely they must find this all very confusing. Gilbert nodded in understanding. Our staff is highly trained in the art of infinite hospitality. They navigate the hotel with the grace of dancers in an endless ballet, attending to the needs of our guests without ever growing weary or lost. They too are part of the grand design, a vital component in the symphony of the infinite. Alice couldn't help but feel a tingle of excitement. And what of the hotel's amenities? Do they also stretch on forever? Why, yes, Hilbert replied. His enthusiasm unflagging. We have an infinite dining hall where the cuisine is as varied as the numbers themselves, and a library stocked with every book ever written and yet to be written. The fitness center stretches infinitely in both directions, so no matter how many guests decide to exercise, there's always enough treadmills and ellipticals to go around. And the best part is, no matter how many people use the showers, the hot water never runs out. Alice's eyes grew wide with astonishment. It's like a mathematical utopia. In a way, yes. Hilbert said, the smile growing even wider. But it's not just about the infinite space. It's about the boundless potential for discovery. The thrill of the paradox that lies within the very fabric of our existence. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must attend to other guests. If you need anything, simply dial zero on your room's phone and we'll be right with you. With that, he disappeared down the corridor, leaving Alice alone with her thoughts. She approached the window, gazing out at the serene horizon where the hills met the sea. As she pondered the hotel's infinite nature, a peculiar sensation washed over her. The very concept of infinity was both awe-inspiring and disconcerting, a puzzle without an edge. A knock on the door startled Alice out of her reverie. She opened it to find a bellhop, dressed in a neat and pressed uniform with an infinite wreath embroidered on the pocket. Madam, your luggage has been transferred to your room. Would you like me to place it in the wardrobe for you? Ah, yes, please, Alice said, still trying to grasp the reality of her surroundings. The bellhop nodded and disappeared into the room, only to emerge moments later with a knowing wind. All set, and may I remind you, our infinite tea service begins in the lobby at 5 o'clock sharp. It's quite the event. Alice's eyes lit up at the mention of tea, a comforting thought amidst the mathematical wonder. She decided to explore the hotel and its infinite wonders before the tea service. Venturing out of her room, she found the hotel's layout to be as predictable as Hilbert had described. Yet as she wandered, she couldn't shake the feeling of the unpredictable lurking just around the corner. The dining hall was indeed as vast as the concierge had promised. The smell of exotic spices and freshly baked pastries wafted through the air, and the sound of countless conversations filled the space. As she approached the buffet, she noticed that no matter how much food was taken, the dishes remained perpetually full. She sampled a piece of pie-themed pie and found it to be both delicious and intellectually stimulating. While wandering, Alice encountered a group of mathematicians engaged in a heated debate about the nature of infinity. They invited her to join them, eager to hear her perspective on the hotel's paradox. For hours, they discussed, laughed, and even played games with infinite rules. Alice felt a sense of belonging she had never experienced before. As the afternoon waned into evening, the grand clock in the lobby chimed five times. The sound echoed through the hotel, signaling the start of the infinite tea service. Guests from all over the hotel began to congregate, filling the lobby with an electric energy. Alice followed the crowd. Curious about the spectacle that awaited her, upon entering the lobby, she found an elaborate setup with an infinite number of tea sets laid out on a table that stretched infinitely in both directions. The clinking of porcelain and the murmur of excitement grew louder as she approached. The concierge, Hilbert, was at the helm, orchestrating the service with the precision of a maestro. Ladies and gentlemen, he announced, welcome to our daily infinite tea service. Please, take a seat and enjoy the never-ending assortment of teas and pastries. Remember, there's always room for one more cup. Alice took a seat at the endless table, 
watching as the servers, also dressed in the infinite loop uniforms, we moved with soon, grace and precision. They poured tea could and served sweets like without ever seeming to reach the end of the line of death. Calling, Each person was attended to as if they were the only one present, a testament to the meticulous planning and execution behind the hotel's operation. As she sipped her tea, Alice couldn't help but overhear snippets of the mathematician's conversations around her. Some spoke of the hotel as a physical manifestation of Hilbert's hotel paradox, while others mused over the implications of infinite space on the nature of the universe. The discussions grew more complex, delving into the realms of quantum physics and the multiverse theory. Alice felt a tap on her shoulder and turned to see an elderly woman with spectacles perched on the tip of her nose. Young lady, I couldn't help but notice your curiosity, she said with a gentle smile. I've been coming here for years, and the paradox never ceases to amaze me. Would you like to join me for a cup of tea? Alice eagerly accepted the offer and soon found herself engrossed in a conversation with the woman who introduced Check herself in, as Dr. Okay, Klein. She spoke of her travels hand. through the multiverse, on the each visit to Hilbert's Hotel a offering a unique Hopped perspective on infinity. You see, somewhere. she explained, Took this hotel is not just a paradox, it's you. a gateway to understanding the very fabric of existence. To a as the evening progressed, the lobby grew dim, and the candles on the tables flickered with an otherworldly glow. Alice stepped outdoors from Hilbert's Hotel. She found there were infinite sunny afternoons. Suddenly, a bright flash of light appeared. Welcome to Hilbert's Hotel, he said with a knowing smile. How may I assist you today? Alice had traveled back in time, was back inside Hilbert's Hotel. Alice felt a strange sense of comfort in the never-ending routine of the hotel.